Hey guys, um, welcome to another uh, Youth Sunday Sermon. I hope you guys are um, safe and doing well in the comfort of your homes. And I hope you guys look forward to today's uh, message from God's Word. Uh, but before we go into God's Word, I just want to make a quick announcement. Um, myself and a few of the teachers and the youth, we are trying to see maybe we can do a like twice a month bi-weekly. Uh, meeting online meeting with you guys for those who are interested I uh, just want to give you guys an opportunity where you guys can meet up with your uh, Sunday school teachers um, so I'm going through the logistics and details right now and aiming for that to happen on July 10th and we'll let you know more in depth and in detail of what that's gonna look like so hopefully um, you guys look forward to that um, for those who are interested in it or maybe if you're not then just you know just swing by into one of those meetings by your sunday school class we're trying to do it by sunday school class so uh if you guys can uh, at least you know just participate and, or at least give it a try even if you don't want to i'll be very encouraging from to me i'm sure for the teachers and for your parents as well um so yeah let's go into god's word today um, um as you have heard me say before but you know, most likely, you forgot. You know, I forget a lot. Uh, must be the age. Uh, but I always try to reflect on what God's word says to me and how my life is like in light of what God says in his word before I try to encourage you to live your life as well. Um, so I was reflecting on the following in my life based on today's uh, message. Um, I have a strong desire to prove myself. Um, like for many of us, uh, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, um, we want to make our parents proud. Uh, and I would do my best myself for my, with my parents back then when I was in grade school. Uh, I wanted to do well and I wanted to make them proud. I want to prove myself to my parents and perhaps um, later on to my friends or <clears throat> strangers or other people. <clears throat> now I see myself saying, yes, I am a good husband. Uh, I can say this, pat myself on the back, oh, in the back, I go all the way back, and, and then go to sleep. Uh, I've noticed also that I have a strong desire to be right. Um, like speaking of a being a good husband, I didn't notice until that I got married that I want to be right whenever I argued or discussed certain things with my wife. And when it looks like I'm actually wrong, like I see like, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute, I'm wrong. It's hard to admit it or I don't even want to acknowledge it even if I know it is wrong. I've also noticed I have a strong desire to be accepted and liked. Um, and I'm sure many of you can relate to this as I've struggled heavily with trying to live my life according to how I wanted to be viewed by others. Whether it was a first time meeting a person and the initial impressions I want to give, or whether it's an ongoing relationship with people. Um, I also noticed that I have a strong desire to be recognized and appreciated. Um, you know, if we're being really honest, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, at times it's hard doing the things that nobody will ever notice unless you outright tell that you're doing it. Um, most people, if they don't see you doing it, like, or they don't know that you're doing it, it will most likely not care who is doing it as long as it is done. Now, this is just some of my um, honest reflection of my heart. I want to be just real with you guys for a moment. And I'm sure you uh, have some similar feelings or different ones than the ones that I mentioned. Um, the point is that all these things I just said is that these things matter and they matter a lot. Why? Well, because when we recognize our selfish desires, uh, it will stop us from making excuses and justifying ourselves. Like we tend to do that, right? We make excuses and we tend to justify ourselves. 
But the gospel exposes our sin and the reality of temptation. But it also reassures us that we have been united to Christ by faith. In other words, we live as forgiven sinners. Now, the great news is that God does not leave us, does not leave you to live your life with conflicting desires within you on your own. Uh, because God sees it and He desires for you to change and He Himself moves to make it happen. If you guys can get your Bibles um, and open up to James chapter 4, and we'll, we're going to read from verses 5 through 6. So, James chapter 4, 5 through 6, and if you guys can follow along, it says, Or do you suppose there is no purpose that the Scripture says, He yearns jealously over the Spirit that He has made to dwell in us, but He gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, the beauty of the gospel is not that God just forgives us, but that He gives us also a way out. A way out from temptation and way out from sinning. Uh, God uses the often, you know, we don't want to, we don't want it, uh, the painful recognition, exposure, and overcoming of our sin. And God gives us, as we read here in these verses, more grace. And how do we get this grace? Well, the answer that James gives can be summed up in a single word, and that is repentance. A complete 180 turn, a complete turn from going our way to going God's way. Um, and then James goes on to tell us to repent in seven different ways in verses 7 through 10. So if you guys can go to James chapter 4, same chapter we've been reading, and read verses 7 to 10 along with me. It says here, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Now, basically, here's what James is saying in today's words from those verses. <coughs> Admit that God is the boss and you are not. Face the fact that you are siding with the devil. Run to God now. Stop sinning and throw yourselves upon God. Take your stupidity seriously. Stop laughing about your sins. Bow before God and King. Now the message is very clear. Repent. Own your sin and run back to God. Now, here is just a realistic picture based on what you just heard. I believe that even as Christians, every day you are fighting what is often is a losing battle with your desires. Now, many of us don't realize that we need to even fight from the, from the start, right? But it is a daily fight. And it seems like this fight, you're always losing. We are choosing me, or in this case, you. You are choosing you over and over and over and over again. And the devil, here's what he's doing. He's in the back with his um, you know, uh, cheerleading group, uh, clothes on, and his pom-poms and whatnot, whatnot. And he's saying like, yeah, choose you. Don't choose God, choose you. And he's cheering us to do our own thing rather than to obey God. And what is God doing while all of this is going on? The, the inner conflict of desires and Satan, the devil, he is cheering you on to just obey yourselves. <clears throat> he is speaking to us day after day after day. God is pursuing. God is explaining. 
God is encouraging, and God is demanding a response. Now, if you are a genuine believer, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. And the Holy Spirit, who is God, is moving and shaping your heart. And you must listen. You must listen. You must repent daily over and over and over again. Because <clears throat> in Christ, you are no longer a slave to sin anymore. In Christ, you are victorious over sin. But here's the thing. Sin does not want to lose. And it does not want to acknowledge that it lost. Sin is a sore loser. And it is always trying to make you its slave again. It wants you to bow down to it. The Christian life... Uh, will always be a life of repentance. And here's what repentance looks like, for those who might be wondering. You realize that you have wronged God. That you wronged Him. You are truly sorry that you have wronged God. None of those, oh, I'm sorry, and then moving on. But like you're, you're like genuinely and like, sorrowfully you desire God's forgiveness like you really desire it you seriously decide to turn away from sin and you also reach out to those that you may have hurt by your sin so what do you need to repent of right um well if we're being honest, right? We're always trying to be honest. If we're being honest, this answer should fly out of our mouths almost immediately. Like, for example, if I was talking to you, just you and me one-on-one, -on -one, and I've asked you, and you also asked me, what we need to repent of, that should just come out of my mouth, like, like boom, like that. Um, because if you're not aware of sin issues in your life, I'm just trying to be real honest and real with you right now, it can only mean that you are not really thinking about it. Or you think that you're fine. Like, sin? No, I don't sin. Sinner? No, nope, that's not me. Um, repentance needs to be specific. And it's the first step to real and lasting change. Uh, now, there is more than just simply admitting our sin and turning back to God. Uh, it doesn't stop there. Uh, James tells us what to do in verse 8. So if you can go to verse 8. Verse 8 says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Draw near to God. Okay, so now go to verse 10. Verse 10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord. So after repentance, you're drawing near to God. You're humbling yourself before God. You're, you're, you're not just simply saying things, right, at, the, at that time. Now you are actually doing, you're, you're taking action. The next step then is to exercise faith. Not just simply saying it, but taking action. Drawing near to God and humbling yourselves before God. Now, many people, and perhaps even you, may think that faith is just something you just blindly believe or something that's been handed down to you from your parents ever since you were a kid or whatnot. But true faith is actually a seeing faith. It's a true um, changing faith. And here's what I mean. The Christian faith is driven by truth, reality, and trust in God. In other words, faith is Believing that God will do what He said He will do. To have faith is to believe that what God has said is true. That Jesus has paid for your sins. And to do what He tells us. Simply put, 
faith is to believe the gospel. It is to trust God completely. Not just a little bit here and there, but completely. Now, <clears throat> you guys can still have your Bible open. Read verse 10 with me. Humble yourselves before the Lord, <clears throat> and He will exalt you. Now, just from just simply just reading it just quickly, you might miss this. There is a promise here in that verse um, when we do believe the gospel. And that promise is that God will forgive you truly and totally. I think that almost all of us find this hard to believe. I know I, I did uh, earlier in my faith. I'm sure if you haven't already, you've come to a point in your Christian life, if you say that you are a Christian, where you mess up greatly and consistently that you wonder then how you can come back or out of this mess. And when this happens, uh, we need to remember and hold on to the promise that God has forgiven us and will forgive us when we repent. But here is what we tend to do. For example, you sin, you feel bad or you ignore it. And depending on whether you feel bad or you ignore, you either don't repent because you feel so ashamed to even go to God with your sin. Or you think that there is no need for you to repent. Now in both cases, uh, you need to respond to the gospel and accept the fact that in your weakness, you can't save yourself and trust that only Christ can. Now, I want you guys to realize that your sin, my sin, our sin is real, it's horrible, and it's powerful. Uh, but not beyond the reach of Jesus, who holds out forgiveness to you even as he calls you to repent and trust in him. And I know it might be hard to see but embracing who you really are, a sinner, brings peace, relief. Now you might be thinking, wait, how does embracing myself and, and knowing and realizing and recognizing that I am a sinner bring peace and relief in my life? Well, hopefully I can encourage you or, and persuade you by saying the following. One, it frees you to be honest before God. Now, let's be real. When have you been honest with others? When is the last time you've been honest with God, right? It frees you to be honest before God. To just, just say your true feelings and um, not trying to hide away your sins or, or um, just trying to just be like more of a checklist thing that you do with God, but just to be really raw and real with Him. Second, it is the key to being humble. Now, once you see that you are a sinner, there is no need to look down on others or talk yourselves up or to try to build up your image. It is the key to being humble. Third, it produces a daily amazement of God in your life. Um, the more and more that you see how horrible of a sinner that you really are, the more and more you see how Jesus made it possible for you to be saved and have a relationship with God. And I pray that you have this daily amazement of who God is and what He has done for you. It creates gentleness towards others. And when you realize how broken, and we really are messed up, broken people, uh, when you realize how broken you actually are, you can then be more understanding uh, to the struggles and stupidity, really, of other people. Um, because you, 
you see that in yourself. Uh, you'll be less surprised. You'll be less disappointed. But most importantly, you less look down on others. Now to answer your question that we try to answer from the beginning or last week's sermon, what does, what is a gospel-shaped life? Simply, it's a life knowing God and being known by God. It is a ongoing daily life relationship of repentance and faith in Christ. Now, there will be many oh no moments in your life as there have been many in mine as well. As you realize how deep your sins and temptations actually go. But I pray that there will be more and more yes Jesus, yes Lord, yes God moments as you go to Jesus in repentance and faith. It will be the best choice you make and the best choices that you will make living a gospel-shaped life. Um, hope you guys really consider the words from James chapter 4 and from today's message from the Lord, from His Word, um, as it definitely made me uh, a Christian for almost 20 plus years um, to to be, uh, again, to be able to reflect on God's Word and the realization of how, how much of a sinner I am and of how much I needed Jesus in my life. So you guys can take some time to reflect on today's word. Take some time to reflect on your heart and take in what God is saying to you, to reflect on it seriously and to um, come before God honestly. All right, guys, uh, take care. Um, if you guys got a lot out from today's message that you give all the glory to him. All right, guys, take care. Bye.